I did it, yeah. I used my leadership, my gifting, mm -hmm. my position in church to manipulate women. Mm -hmm. Can I get it on us? Man, Listen, yes, sir. gotta keep it 100. Yes, the only sir. way we get delivered Come is to on, get on us. Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, what's good? What's popping? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. It's Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie to All, and I'm here to give real good content for the masses and to always keep it funky for your asses. I'm in the presence of a man of God, a powerful person, a person that you've probably seen on your live airways, probably a person that you've seen with so much influence on social media and doing it the right way, might I add, Bishop Olds. Man, listen, I'm excited to be here with you, man. Yes, it's sir. a privilege and an honor to be in your presence, man. I'm glad to be um, chosen. Yes, sir. And picked for uh, such a time as this, man. You're doing great things and I'm excited to be a part of it. So usually, you know, anybody who sees this show, they know, you know, I, I, I have an infatuation with smoking cigars. Yeah. Right? And we spoke about this off camera, but I, I just want to be obedient and, 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 and understanding of the person that you are. Yeah. And it's no different than if my father was speaking right here or, sure. or my mother, sure. right? I'm at a point in my life where I, I, I must admonish a person of high value, of high regard, or more or less a man of God, Yeah. you know? Um, so I don't want you to think that I'm changing. I don't want nobody else to think that I'm changing. But it's just about giving respect, you know. And uh, I think that is important right now. That doesn't make me weak. That yeah. doesn't make you sure. superior. Sure. I think once you understand being at my, at my seat, we need more people to understand. It's just about respect. Yeah. And nothing else needs to be said about it. But, man, I'm, I'm happy to have you here. Yeah. yeah. I got a list of things that I kind of want to go uh, and, and, and discuss and talk about. And uh, honestly, man, I'm curious to know what is the process like as you're getting prepared for a sermon? Well, it's um, a tedious process mm -hmm. um, in and of itself. Right. Because it literally starts with consecrating, um, separating yourself so that you can hear um, from the Creator because before I talk to God's people, I want to talk to God. Mm. I want to know exactly what he wants to say right. so that I won't be fishing and missing the people that's in front of me. So it's when, you say, when you say consecrating, that's, a, that's a, a, a word that a lot of people, well, I'm going to speak for myself, that I know some of it, mm -hmm. but put it in a layman's term when you say consecrating. Well, well set aside um, uh, your mind, your spirit, your body, um, for the use of God. Mm -hmm. um, because in life, we can indulge in a lot of things. Of course, you know, I skate, I do yeah, all kinds of yeah. stuff. And so when I'm skating, um, there's oftentimes I'm skating to different type of music, which I enjoy, right. and I'm not changing. Right. Right. <laughs> but I have to consecrate from that. I have to get along with God. I got to read his word. I got to listen to the spirit of God so that I can be proper and correct when I speak to God's people. Right. So it's important of consecration that you separate yourself, you meditate. The scripture even says when you meditate day and night, you should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So when I'm preaching, I want to be able to be sturdy, yeah. want to be able to be focused, mm -hmm. and want to be pointed so persons that are listening can get changed. Because I'm a preacher that don't like the charm, I come to change. And yeah. so consecration is part of that process. And then, of course, reading the text, understanding the text, and put application to the text. Right. That's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have um, application to the text, I believe you abort what God intends for us to hear. Right. I think, uh, man, it's going to be great. I mean, just for me to have access to you uh, in a situation that a lot of people may not even may not have even thought 
there's 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 an opportunity to create change yeah. in this in this type of dialogue. I think for me, it's really about you know when when you make that decision to have your relationship with God, your relationship. And I said this earlier, your relationship is completely different than my relationship. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But I think a lot of people need to understand it's it's this part that is always forgotten. When you're talking, you're speaking. Right, mm -hmm. you're not listening. Mm -hmm. Right, sure. there's two forms, and and this is how it was explained to me. There's two forms of prayer. Mm -hmm. There's the the intentional part, mm -hmm. and then there's the receiving part. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. So intentions are okay, God. I want you to do this, God. I I love you, God. I appreciate you, God. I need you to do this, God. I need you to do that, God. Yeah. Help me, God. Help da 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 da. Yeah. But most people just leave it at that. Sure. Sure. They don't understand. There's a meditation part to hear, sure. to listen. Every single time when Jesus wanted to hear from God, he was always isolated. Sure, sure. Always isolated, especially when there was a strenuous task that was asked upon him. Yeah, and, and prayer is, is communication. Yes. So you can't communicate properly if you never listen. Yes. And so we petition God, we ask God for things, but we don't listen for the instruction because mm. many times God will give us instructions um, when we listen, what he wants to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we get so caught up asking God, asking mm -hmm. God, but we, we don't listen to what God has to say. So even to that point, and this is one of my questions that I ask, how do you know as a believer, how do you know as a person, man, my life is a living hell right now. Man, I'm going through so much. Man, I just had death in the family. Man, my car just broke down. Man, I don't got enough money to pay my bills or for me to eat. I don't have situations to take care of my my life. My family, my children, but yet they pray, right? Mm -hmm. So to that believer, to that person who is praying, what would be your approach to that to say, stay steadfast and, you know, this is how you listen or hear from God? Well, it goes back to what you said. The relationship with God is personal. Mm -hmm. Once you develop and cultivate a relationship with God, you understand that God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. And God is providential, which means that God works from the ending to the beginning. Mm -hmm. He knows the ending before it starts. Right. So when you're in the hand of God, he orders your steps. And so when you have a personal relationship with God, knowing that whatever you're going through, if God allowed it, it's as if he did it. Yes. And so I trust them. If he allowed this to happen, if he allowed that to happen, and he's my God, he's my protector, he's mm -hmm. my guider, he's my... Uh, all in all, mm -hmm. then I have faith enough to believe, even when I can't see it, that God's going to be all right with me. Right. And so that gives me confidence, but it's personal. Everybody's relationship is not at the same level. So that's why people, they squirm, they go through, because they can't trace God. And sometimes, even myself, I got to trust God when I can't trace him. Yeah. When I don't understand what's going on in my life, even as a preacher, mm. even believing God for a long time when things get tough, and storms and valleys come, right. I have to still trust them when I can't trace them. And that's very right there, man. Listen, do you think that there is a disconnect in old ministry and new ministry? I do. Can you speak on it? I believe that old ministry, which I was a part of, mm -hmm. was inundated with the work of the church or the work of God. Mm -hmm instead of knowing the God of the work. Mm. This new millennials, these the new church, they're more caught up with their relationship with God where they are. Right. We were brought up, you had to do this, you had to do that, you couldn't go here, you couldn't go there. Right. And when you do those things, you have an inroad to God. Yeah. When Christ came on the scene, that's what the old religious beliefs was. You had to obey the law. Mm -hmm. You had to go here and you had to go there. And Jesus came and brought this thing called grace mm -hmm. into the lives of people that if you accept the grace of God, because nobody could get the whole law right. Nobody could follow all the rules. And so this relationship with God is not religious. Mm -hmm. So these young people today, you know, they're not caught up with all the rules and the regulations. They want a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. They want to know that God loves them yes. where they are. 
because all of us, like you said earlier, fall short yes. of the glory of God. And it's very important that we get honest with ourselves. I've been teaching, I'm glad you talked about that. I've been teaching lately on self-examination. Mm -hmm. So you know I come from the drug game. Right. Did not I, know that. I was at, yeah, I come from the drug game. Mm -hmm. I sold dope when I went to um, Howard University. I started selling. You went dope. to Howard? Yeah, I went to Howard. Well, my yeah. brother went to uh, HU. Yeah. Or oh, as they say, the real HU. Right. So mm -hmm. we, so in the mid 80s, yeah. around 85, um, crack cocaine hit the scene. Yes, yeah, sir. And I got caught up um, with freebasing. Mm -hmm. And then I got strung out on cocaine and crack. Yeah. And so, of course, I went through rehabs and I went to jail and I went here and I went there. But when I finally made up my mind that I really want to get my life together, mm -hmm. I had to go through some stuff and learn about who Vance really was because drugs was never my problem. Mm. Right? Vance was the problem. Yeah. And so I had to do a lot of self-examination. Yes. I had to deal with some personal stuff that I really didn't like about me. It didn't have nothing to do with church. It didn't have nothing to do with God. It had everything to do with who I was. Accountability. Accountability. So I had to make some self-examinations. Mm -hmm. I had to find out my self-centeredness was the core of who I was, right. that I was selfish, mm -hmm. that I was um, I had low self-esteem, that I was insecure as a man. Mm -hmm. And I had to deal with that. And I dealt with that through relationships and resentment and bitterness and anger. And all this stuff was built up on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I would dress up like Versace on the outside, no, but I felt wouldn't. like Kmart on the inside. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> yes, sir. Not Kmart. Kmart. <laughs> Kmart. It was a facade. And that's what the church looked like. Yeah. The church is an outside job. Yeah. You were talking about Samuel earlier. Mm -hmm. And Samuel, when he came to choose David for the next king, yep. he said that man... Looks at the outward appearance, and he had no. So, so let me let me get my little flex on. Right now. <laughs> Samuel went to I, I can't remember the name, but he went into the tribe to 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 ask for the sons Jesse, sons of Jesse. They kept ask, they kept bringing one. Oh, you gonna like him? He's right. so strong and right. that, that, that. Uh, uh, that's not him. He was waiting for a sign from God. He sent another one. Boom, another one comes in. He's like, uh, you sure, God? Man, this one he's tall, he's strong, he's almighty. Da, da, da. Uh-uh, not him either. And son at the son at the son at the son at the son, he could have bought a thousand sons. Listen, watch this. I just heard something. That's the distinction between the old church and the new church. Mm -hmm. the, old, the older sons, they looked the part. Yes, sir. But the younger son is the day's church. God looked at his heart. Mm. See, we, we had this form of fashion. You had to go here. You couldn't, you, you couldn't wear it. Women, women couldn't wear, wear a dress, uh, right. couldn't wear pants. The outward appearance. So that's what the old church looked like. Yeah. The new church, they just love God. Yeah. They want God yeah. right where they were. David was in the sheep field. Yes, he was. Tending the sheep, picking yeah. up sheep dung. Yes, he was. Blowing kisses to God. Yeah. Saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I, I shall, shall not want. Yeah. yeah. And, and Samuel said, that's the one. Mm -hmm. That's the one because he loves me from his heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus said this to all the religious people. Mm -hmm. You look like white sepulchers on the outside, yeah. but you look like dead man bones on the inside. You blow kisses with me with your lips, but your heart yeah. is far from me. Yeah. See, it's not about how you do it, where you go, who you with. It's your heart. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the pure in heart, mm -hmm. for they shall see God. Mm -hmm. See, that's what God did. And many of us, even in the church, we need to circumcise the heart. Yeah. We need to pull it back, cut it off, and throw it away. No, man, they don't like that. Circumcise the heart. They That's what like the that, Bible man. talks about, getting this clean heart, because yeah. God ain't looking at our rules mm -hmm. and religion. He's looking at our hearts. Yes, sir. And when you got the love of God in your heart, mm -hmm. you won't be judgmental. Yes, sir. You meet people where they are. Yes, sir. You love them where they are. Yes, sir. You don't act arrogant. Mm-hmm. Because when you got the right heart, God says there's nothing I withhold from you. Man, listen, I think uh, <laughs> this here recent, man, you man, you man, you own something right now, Bishop, and I, I'm trying to keep you in your phase, you know what I mean? Because you feel like you you like Samson, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> your hair keep growing longer and longer and longer. You keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But, man, this was placed on my heart a couple of days ago. I was talking to a business partner of mine, yeah. and I told him, and, and, and we have a working relationship, right? And... I'm invested in a company that I've known a little of him, but more or less just trying to educate myself with this process. But needless to say, he said something. He said, Cam, he said, bro, you ain't got to worry about ego with me. 
Because ego for me is an acronym for easing God, God out. out. Yes, sir. I said, oh, man, you said something, brother. Yes, and I said, man, what you even saying me, telling me that, bro, that's my accountability for me to always do right by you. Mm -hmm. And God, he doesn't, like you said, he doesn't look on the outer realm. He looks at your heart. That's right. And I always tell people that's close to me, I'm not a verbal person. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may say, man, Cam, bro, you got you to gotta be a little bit more softer, man. You got to, you know, follow up and do this and do that. I tell even, even my partner that's in my life right now, I tell her, I said, babe, look, I'm an action person. Just because I don't tell you I love you, sure. I'm going to show you I love you. Sure. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a make sure that everything that you need, that's the type of person that I'm going to be for you because my father, mm -hmm. my earthly father was the person, that's who he was for our family. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But that didn't make him either less to say, I already know if anything hell or high water come, to, come, come down to me, I know my father's going to be there. My father probably never, we've never kissed. We probably, when we hug, it's only on a man hug, you know what I'm saying? We haven't really, you know, had that intimate type of relationship. But I know, and I've, I, it took me some time to understand that, I know who my father is to me. And I love him for that. Yeah. And I think more my, my, my mother, she brings out a different side of me, just like anybody else does. So, you know, for that, for that specific moment, I think you, you, you have a moment that you have to tap in and say, man, listen, I want to be my best version of myself internally. And every single prayer that I pray, that I, pray I want people to see the God in me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's some issues that I have. I've been trying to fight my tongue for years and years because my younger brother who did go to Howard, he just graduated with his master's from Auburn. He is now, wow. you know, going to uh, awesome. William and Mary right now. Yeah. Um, he's just been there for a week, I think, right now. But he, he doesn't curse. Yeah. And I said, man, I admire that, man. But I just, my road to, 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 my walk with God is completely different than his walk with God. You know what I'm saying? But your heart, your, mm -hmm. your heart. See, love is the law mm -hmm. of Christ's kingdom. That's the one word. Love mm -hmm. is the law. Jesus said this one time, man. It, it, it blew, blew the disciples' mind because he said the world would know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. Mm. That's, that's how, not, not how well you can preach, not how well you can sing, yeah. not how well you can administrate, not how well you can do business. They would know that you're my disciples by how you love one another. Mm -hmm. And that's tough yeah. because people can be flat out crazy. They can. But we got to love them or love me through it. Mm -hmm. And when you have that type of agape love that's unconditional, yeah. mm -hmm. right, that we can love people um, through anything, yeah. and that's the law of Christ's kingdom. But I'll tell you this, though, Pat, uh, Bishop, it's it's tough because anybody who knows me know, like I I keep my uh, my circle real small, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I know my heart. Mm -hmm. I know I love hard. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I don't. It takes a person to be burned to uh, uh, avoid from being or burning somebody else. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So it even even with us. Like, and, and, and I understand who you are, who you are, but I'm so comfortable with having a cushion between so many different people. I, I, yeah. I communicate with people on Instagram. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Multiple people, male, female, you know, young, old, but I keep that cushion for Instagram not to allow them to have my number. Sure. So, you know, even when you, when you was reaching out, man, here go my number, da da da, da yeah. I, I'm just so trained sure. that, because when you come in to yeah. me, sure. It's nothing right. that I wouldn't do for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's a, that's a strong word, but I'm telling you, I love hard. And I know there's a lot of people out there that feel just like me because it's like, man, when you do pour into a person and they do become your Judas mm -hmm. and they do betray you, when they do have all these different things, man, it hurt, man. Yeah, it hurts. It hurt. Mm -hmm. And then it creates this wall where, okay, this person did that. Okay, that person did that. Okay, that person did that too. Okay, that person did that too. Now you 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 shielding yourself mm -hmm. from the realness of you know somebody else. Somebody else. 
You know what I'm saying? But am I to blame? Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, going through this thing that we call life, man, it's all about building relationships and understanding and knowing that. Listen, and I was having a conversation with my girl, uh, you know, even this morning, just talking about, babe, like, you're going through a different phase of your life. You can't keep saying, oh, that's my best friend. Yeah. No, that was your best friend at that that's point right. in time. Mm-hmm. You saying that that's your best friend now, that's not, that's not your best friend. Right. That's, that, that's your acquaintance. That's, mm-hmm. your, that's your friend. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we follow each other on Instagram. We always keep a... No, no, no. But does, that, does your best friend know your mom? Mm-hmm. No, I ain't never... Had... That's not your best friend. Mm-hmm. Your best friend knows everything about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I just want people to understand. It's like, man, you got to you gotta always warrant what you say and how you say certain things. Because my mama was the first person to tell me, boy, there's power in the tongue. Yeah. Careful what you say now. Be careful, be careful of the blessings that you bestow over people or the de- demonic right. spirits that you bestow on people as well. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Um, yeah, Life man. and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm-hmm. Your words, your declaration. You know, man... At the end of the day, it's a process mm-hmm. for everybody. Um, now I've been I've been drug drug free for like 29 years, mm. um, but it's a process. It's a sanctification process. Once you give your life to God, then it's about working on self. Mm. That's so important. I think I think persons today. Spend a lot of time looking at everybody else's stuff mm-hmm. instead of self-examining ourselves. Now, the Bible, the, the book that we read, the Bible is not a window so you can see everybody else's stuff. Mm-hmm. The Bible is a mirror so you can see you, mm-hmm. so you can have a personal relationship and a development so your character can change. But it's a process. Mm-hmm. Man, I used to smoke Newports. Mm. I loved, man, running women. No. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I was the biggest trick it was. No, you weren't, man. man. I'm telling you. I tell my wife while she gets mad, I say, man, listen, I love women, but yes. I'm only in love with one woman. Yes, sir. And so I had to get delivered from that. Mm-hmm. Even in church, can I get honest? Yeah, man, come on now. As a preacher. Come on now. As a preacher come on now. in church. I see it. My father's a preacher. Yeah. I see the woman that's in church, and they come in, and, you know, as they would say, you a wolf in sheep clothing. Yeah. And a lot of women, and a lot of, not, I'm not going to be specific to women, a lot of humans use that as a ploy to get closer to somebody else. Absolutely. 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 You see what I'm saying? It's a lot of different things that you can kind of, you know, shape and form, and you can say the right things, but over time, time's going to... I did it. Mm. So I know it's to be true. I use my leadership. My gifting, Mm -hmm. my position in church to manipulate women Mm -hmm. to have sex with them. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Mm -hmm. I literally was in ministry and got caught. A girl went back. Can I get it honest? Listen. No, 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 no. As we said, can we keep it funky? (laughs) Listen. Got to keep it 100. The only way we get delivered is to get honest. Come on. And so... um, now, this was all before I got married. Yes, sir. I became a pastor. Yes, sir. I was a straight up womanizer. Mm-hmm. So I was manipulating the girl in church. Mm-hmm. She caught her feelings, mm-hmm. fell in love, yes, sir. and wouldn't go tell the pastor without me. Mm-hmm. So the pastor made me sit down, took my position, made me go to counseling to deal with power, money, and sex. Because mm-hmm. I had to deal with this lusting devil yeah. that I had on me taking advantage of vulnerable women. Yeah. That God loved. Mm. And I had to deal with that thing. Mm. And I had to read Psalm 51. If you notice now, David, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Yeah, that, that, right, that, right, hey, right, right. That's the only time he uh he displeased God. Yeah. On the balcony. On the balcony. He saw her in the riverbed. Yes, yeah, sir. And so he wrote the Psalm 51. Mm-hmm. That psalm was a repenting psalm because of the act that he did, because he had Uriah. 
her husband killed on yeah. the front line. Yeah. And he said stuff like creating me a clean heart, mm -hmm. renew a right spirit within me, restore the joy of the Lord of my salvation. But notice in that particular, that entire psalm, he never mentions Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it takes two to tangle. Yes, sir. But he never mentioned her. He kept the focus on himself. Mm -hmm. And he began to. And then God says, I'm calling this man a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, how you going to call him a man after your heart? He committed adultery, took the man's only wife, had the man killed mm -hmm. on the front line. And the Lord says, when he repented, he never did it again. Mm -hmm. And that's our problem. We don't repent, we repeat. <laughs> hey, but, but 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 can we keep it funky too? Yeah. I'm talking about real funky. Real funk. David. How many wives did David have? Man, he had tons of wives. How many concubines did he have? Tons of them because his son Solomon. Solomon, had 3, yeah, 000. come on now. Three thousand. So, so for those people who 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 see a situation like this and they say, "Oh, can that's the Old Testament, this the New Testament." Let's speak on it. As far as relationships, it's always been known to 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 the world. Which one are you more likely to hear? A man with multiple wives or a wife with multiple husbands? And that's that's a hard question. That's something I never thought about. But I'm asking you, which one have you heard more times than not? A man. Man with more women. Right. Of course. Right. So there is obviously a disconnect with a double standard being displayed from the beginning of time. Would you say so? Yes. My issue is for as direct as the Bible is, mm -hmm. and I'm going to hurt some people's feelings. That's with okay. This but I'm just keeping it funky. Keep it funky. And I'm loving where we at right now. <laughs> the Bible never specifically says one. It says a, but it never says one. Now, it says at one time when it's talking about a deacon in the church, mm -hmm. you're supposed to have one wife. Mm -hmm. So when people talk to me, I, I'm very argumentative. I love to debate. I went to school. I got a degree in sociology. I took some psychology classes in order to get my degree. I love, I love people. Right. Right. And I just know how, how they think. But in order to understand people, you have to get to the root. Sure. Right. A lot of people that I come in contact with have or are battling relationship issues. Sure. So when I talk to the males and I talk to the females, you know, I love to tease them in a sense of, of knowing the word to the degree or knowing, knowing certain situations in life. And it's like, you can't sit up here and state the Bible and not know the Bible, right? right? Mm -hmm. This is a thing that even I have to warrant myself with speaking to you about because it's always an issue, not an issue, but it's always a healthy debate when I'm talking to my mom about it, sure. when I'm talking to my father about it, sure. in situations like that, because it ruffles a lot of people's feathers. Sure. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would say the person that I relate to, to the most in the Bible was and is David. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Because he wasn't the he wasn't the strongest, he wasn't the 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 tallest. He was a person who wanted God's heart, and in return, God gave him everything his heart desired. That's right. And it wasn't even a part, it wasn't even about Bathsheba. Mm -mm. Because if he said, if, if David, as God would say, if David went to God and said, you know what, God, I want Bathsheba, mm -hmm. God in some way, shape, form would have gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Right? How crazy it looked like. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think we live in a day and time now where it's like we have to understand, listen, your relationship is one thing, but, but there's a lot of people in search of something that they're not holding themselves accountable to first. Mm -hmm. you know. And when you have certain situations, as I will talk about in the Bible, the, 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 the great book, there were a lot of favored men that had God's favor Mm -hmm. that had multiple wives. I'm not saying that I, that, that I want to have multiple women around me and it's an okay. I'm, I, don't, I don't believe in that. I don't condone that because of the morals that that was been instilled and implemented in my life. Sure. But it's still there, though. It's still there. You, and it's still happening. And it's still happening. It's still happening. It's still personal. Um, for me, like, like, it goes right back to 
it's personal. Mm -hmm. Your relationship with God is personal. And so we have to allow people to be where they are with their God. Yeah. And not be so judgmental and, and sending people to hell because we don't have the final rule yeah. to anything. For me, because of the way I was raised and because I knew the Lord Jesus left us two commands when he left. Now, when he was on the scene, he was in the Old Testament, of course. Mm -hmm. New Testament doesn't start till he gets up from the grave. Mm -hmm. So he was in the Old Testament. And they was in a time of dispensation of law. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I didn't come to destroy it. I came to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. But he said, I'm going to leave you. He, this was his last verse. I'm going to leave you with two commands. He says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because I told you love is the law of Christ's kingdom. Yes, Here's the two commands. This is going to bless everybody. If you get this, you got it all. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second one is likewise the same. Love that neighbor as yourself. That's the law. Mm -hmm. Now, if you love your neighbor as yourself, then there's some things you won't do to others that you don't want done to you. So, to that point too, mm -hmm. right? There's always that you got many different gods, right? Prophets, right? Religions, yeah. Creeds or whatever. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Muslim, when you talk about Buddhism, when you talk about uh, Hinduism, Hinduism yeah. when you talk about Mormonism, yeah. when you talk about Seven Day Adventists, when you talk about all these other ones that I'm that I'm that I'm just forgetting, uh, lost for words. Yeah, the common denominator mm -hmm. is do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Simple and plain, in some way, shape, form. In the Quran, it's gonna say it's gonna have it yeah. in a type of way. But the thing is with those creeds that anybody goes by and live by, the thing is what makes Muslims have relationships or multiple wives? You feel me? That's just always been, you know, my kind of thinking and theory because it's like, man, wow, like for us to be so much alike. And I hear, I had a conversation yesterday uh, with a talent and she said, you know what? One of the things that I need my partner to have, she was single. Yeah. She said, one thing that I need my partner to have, he has to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I said, I received that. Mm -hmm. I said, let me, let me ask you this, though. Your religion is what? She said, I'm Christian, mm -hmm. devout Christian. Mm -hmm. I said, OK, cool. But what if the man is Muslim? Mm -hmm. Do you still see like you taking him serious? She sat back. She said, uh, that's just something we're going to have to talk about. Mm -hmm. So in that type of situation, how does that even, what's the right way to go about it though? Because I've seen multiple situations where in most religions, the male dominance will make a woman believe in what she wants to believe in or, or make, make her believe in what he believes no in. No doubt about it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because in a Muslim religion, you can't be a Christian if you're my woman. Of course. And it's supposed to be like that in the Christian relationship right. because it's unevenly yoked. It'll be a difficult spiritual mm -hmm. relationship. Now, I've known several older couples that the wife, wonderful lady. Yes, sir. A Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. She's 90-something years old. She did, used mm -hmm. to do telling on my clothes. Mm -hmm. And her husband, they've been married over 50-something years. He's Catholic. Mm -hmm. And they, they got wonderful children. They got a wonderful relationship. They love each other. And she got an altar in the living room, and he, he does what he does in his garage. Yeah. And so um, they were shared that it was difficult, but they didn't indulge or they didn't bombard each other spiritually. Mm -hmm. But for me as a devout Christian, it, it's, it would be hard for me to not have a woman that's a Christian because when storms and trials and tests and trauma and, and valleys and, and, and all sorts of fun things come that way, I need a woman that can pray with me that I can agree with mm -hmm. spiritually. Right. Now, I ain't talking about going and put our money together, get a house, a car, mm -hmm. or get some groceries or buy some clothes. We can go shopping and, and go to sack and spend some money, but we can agree on that. But when it's time, when there's a storm to hit my house, and I'm saying, baby, we need to pray. Right now. Right now. And we need to be in agreement. Right? Right now. Right now. And we need to be in agreement spiritually. Mm -hmm. That's the struggle. 
Yeah. That would that will be the struggle. That would be the struggle. Right. Now everything else, I mean, you know, um, it's cool. But 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 I ain't uh a spiritual man with a relationship with God through Christ that I cannot live without prayer. Mm-hmm. And my prayer knows, doesn't have to be like your prayer. It's personal with my relationship with God right. because it's a process. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about earlier, it don't have to be these and thousands, oh great, I'm not, I'm not, it don't have to be all that. When, 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 listen, listen, listen. When Peter got out of that boat and walked on water to Jesus. Mm-hmm. The Bible says he was walking on water. And then he took his eyes off of Christ and he began to sink. Mm-hmm. Here's his prayer. Save me. That's it. Mm. It wasn't a long 30-minute prayer with all these big words. He had a relationship with Christ. Two words, save me. Christ reached down with his right hand, picked him up on the water. They walked back to the boat. Mm-hmm. On the water. So your relationship is your relationship. Mm-hmm. But it's hard for me uh, to, to pray um, with someone that we're not in agreement. So how can two walk together unless they agree? So spiritually, it would be difficult. Mm-hmm. But I'm not saying it won't work mm-hmm. because I've seen it work, mm-hmm. but it would be difficult. Right. Now, the woman that you mentioned, she said that I'm a devout Christian, mm-hmm. right? Like you said, the, sh- the man would be dominant in any spiritual relationship. Mm-hmm. If I, when I met my wife, my wife was indulging a little bit. She wasn't devout. Her mama was your over witness, mm-hmm. right? And um, and she used to always say, "You ain't gonna change me." <laughs> now I didn't meet my I didn't meet my wife at church. <laughs> I met my wife at the skate rink. No, you did. Yeah, I met my I met my wife at the skate rink. Because I still skate. Yeah. And I love to skate. Mm-hmm. I have I fun. Tell. I can it's see my it. mental release. Yeah. You know, and I don't skate the gospel music. Mm-hmm. Never did. I've been skating for 47 years. Mm. And you could groove too. Bro. 47 I, years. Man, listen, yeah. I see it. I see you doing it, man. I said, man, that's a smooth brother right there, man. Because you you get down with the get down and you lift the leg up and then you come back with it, Bang. turn around. And it's just sequential. And me being from Atlanta, that's the this the skating capital of the world, I would like to think. Yeah, it's the culture. Man. You know what I'm saying? Listen, but. Skating is therapeutic. Mm-hmm. I forgot to tell you, when you asked me what do I do, and I left out the main thing I do. Mm. That's skating. Because when I skate, I don't think about anything. Mm-hmm. That little four-hour session, I don't think about anything. Four hours? Sessions, sessions four hours. But it's good. But when you're good, we used to come. We came late, about ten thirty. If it's over at twelve, because we, you know, we professional. We shut it down. <laughs> we shutting it down. Yeah. We ain't never leaving the flow. But man, that's it's it's a mental release. I don't want to go there, but it is it's literally it's literally um, therapeutic. It's a mental release, and you get a, a break in your mind before you have a breakdown. You we, you was talking about uh, meeting your wife at. Oh, the skate ring. The skate ring, and she being Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, she was Jehovah's Witness. And she would tell me all the time, yeah, well, she knew I was a preacher. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I met her coming from seminary one night. Mm-hmm. And I used to go skating every Wednesday night um, at the skate rink on Seabrook. Had my suit on and everything. Yeah. And I saw her sitting over there. She had on some white shorts. I'd never forget. No. Oh, man. Bam, boom, bam. She was looking bam, good. Boom, bam, Not the yes, color. Sir. I, I, was, I wasn't attracted because she shouted and spoke in tongue. I was attracted because she was beautiful. Nah. <laughs> can, I, can you touch me? Now, I was can a preacher. Now, she wasn't. T- watch this. Watch this. She wasn't my prototype. She was my type. She was your type. See, a prototype means I'm a preacher. I need a preacher's uh-huh, wife. Uh-huh, need somebody to uh-huh, wear a light scarf, uh-huh, a hat, and speak mm-hmm, in tongue, and mm-hmm. act all bougie. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. She wasn't my prototype. She was my type. She had on short white shorts. She, yeah. had, on, she had a short hair. Yeah. It was gold. Her eyes looked like milk dugs. She had this milk little earring in her, in her, in, in her in nose. nose. She was cute, had her skates. And most of all, she was by herself. She wasn't clicked up. Uh-uh. And I looked over and I glanced. I said, uh-huh. But notice now, let me go back. Go back. When I told you back when I was a preacher and I, I had this lust demon, I was mm-hmm. messing with all the chicks in the church, and I went and got counseling for six months because mm-hmm. I had to deal with that thing. Had I not dealt with that, mm-hmm. right, I'd probably been running around all over my wife. I've been married to my wife 
over 17 years, never slept with another woman. Mm. The entire marriage. I, I did not say I didn't look at a woman. Yeah, I felt that. I said I never, because I, women still look attractive. They look good. Right. But I never, t through the grace of God, yeah. pursued and went after. But let me tell you this, though. Yeah. Right? Going back to our conversation that we had yesterday, I think the thing that, that I was asking her to understand, and I don't think most partners are willing to do, I'm not gonna say, and I, when I say partners, I mean male yeah. and female. Yeah. They aren't patient enough. And what I mean by patience is understanding who your partner is right. and saying, okay, I'm gonna give you an ultimatum. This is what I'm gonna go for, yeah. and this is my non-negotiable. Right. But with you knowing my non-negotiable, it's not just gonna cut off right there. I'm gonna give you a time to fix yourself. Sure. And I'm gonna be there along the way. I think my situation works best now because my partner knows me. Yeah. And I'm able to say, man, baby, I'm weak. All right. I'm, it, it's tough. Sure. And real, real, real spill. Sure. Rather, I've had situations where I was so, I didn't, I didn't have an outlet. Right. That I would, could call somebody after the club, or I could call somebody after a game, or I could call somebody in a time of need where it's yeah. just like, man, it's, it's it's hard to explain. It's hard for me no, even no. to speak to you about I it. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. You feel me? I get it. But when you find somebody who's patient yeah. with you, that's not judgmental, yeah. that's not, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh, that ain't, that ain't of God, that ain't this, uh-uh, you ain't gonna keep doing this to me. I'm letting you know right now, if you do that, I'm walking out. I've had situations where I could have done it. I never did it. You know something? It doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. That lust, it doesn't go away. The proclivity, the propensity of me liking nice looking women doesn't go away. Yes, sir. And I got young, pretty women coming to my church right. every week. Right. It doesn't go away. But you know, Early on, what I used to say to myself, what? when I saw a girl going down the road and she looking good, and nobody's looking. See, it's not what you do when everybody's looking. Integrity says what I do when I'm all by myself. Yes, sir. Right? And I see her driving. I say, how would I feel if my wife is doing what I'm about to do? Mm. How would I feel if I'm getting ready to holler out the winger? You know how we, we do. Hey! <laughs> You know how we do, right? How would I feel if that was my wife hollering out after another man? Mm -hmm. And that's just me. Right. Like I said, it's personal. Some people wouldn't care. Right. Some people would be like, well, that's cool. I see you, Red. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that helped me for a while. It's the application. See, life, man, takes work. Mm -hmm. That's what I think we avoid. We don't want to do the necessary Ongoing work. Ongoing work. All going, all always it's, evolving. It's all, it's always work. Mm -hmm. It's always work. Looking, taking a self inventory mm -hmm. of yourself. Where are you for real? Mm -hmm. Aside from your your position, your title, your your pedigree, your degree, your status, where are you for real? What see people see what you do. Mm -hmm. But God sees why you do it. Oh. What, where are you for real? What's the intent? Mm -hmm. What's the motive? Is it really pure? Because whatsoever man soweth that, they call it karma. In Southeast and from D.C., where I'm from, they call it what goes around comes around. But that's not karma, though. Well, help me. That's not, so, so my thing is this. I always have that conversation with people, and I tell them, I don't believe in karma. Because karma is, was always told to me in a sense that, you know, what goes around comes around, right? So yeah. that's almost, who is the most purest person you know? God. Okay. So who is the most, I don't know to say purest, but outside of yourself, the, the wholesome, who's a wholesome person that you know? Wholesome? Wholesome, yeah. It's uh, not a trick question. I don't want to drop names, but I got one in my mind. Okay. With that person that's in your mind, mm -hmm. bad things doesn't happen to her or him? Yeah. They may not get a flat tire. Oh, yeah. They may not have something bad, you know, that was unfortunate. Yeah. But karma tells me that says, if, if they're driving down the street, that wholesome person that you got in your mind, mm -hmm. 
A flat tire hit. Oh, that ain't nothing but karma. Oh no. That yeah, I don't yeah, I don't You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because they say, oh man, that was something. That's your karma from when you slapped somebody back in the sixth grade. No, 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 no. What I believe in is life. Right? My girl, my grandma used to say this one: you make the bed, you gotta lay in it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not what goes around, comes around. It's about understanding that that's just life. And it's up to you to look at that cup and say, that's half empty and half full. Watch this. Life shows up for everybody, mm -hmm. but everything is a seed. Mm. Everything is a seed. Right. Everything you do, everything, and what you plant, right? Mm -hmm. What you plant, you will get a harvest. Right. What you sow, you're going to reap. Now, aside from just life showing up for you, mm -hmm. life just going to show up. That's the providentiality of God. Right. But everything is a seed. It's like pain mm -hmm. is a seed. Mm -hmm. What is a seed to? Pain is a seed to change. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the pain came that I said, yes, God, I'm willing to stop smoking these drugs, stealing this money, and going to jail. Mm -hmm. The pain got great. That was a seed. Mm -hmm. Everything is a seed. That's why the Bible says in Galatians, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yes. So... To that point, I was talking about the person that you still have in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Bad things that don't happen to them, correct? Yeah. But also, what about the most foulest person that you probably encounter? Mm -hmm. Good things don't happen to that person? Absolutely. When that person says, you know what, man, I'm going to rob Bishop O today. Right. He may be successful. He may come up on a couple hundred, thousand, whatever. That's still a good lick for a person, right? So... Until that person recognizes and say, man, I've been robbing all my life. I ain't got caught yet, right? right. That still may be your prerogative. Right. That's why my whole thinking in theory to the sense of uh, 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 karma, karma, is it, that's not that. Because you can, you can mentally think that I'm doing, you know, have the Robin Hood mentality. Oh, I'm just robbing for the folks who, that stay in Buckhead and taking it back to the folks in the hood and Bankhead. Mm -hmm. They think that's the, that's a that's a, a service, right. right? They think that's the, that's their purpose, right? right? Yeah. I'm not I'm not the God Almighty to say that that's right or that's wrong, right. right? But what I am saying is that's just the the life that we live in to be able to agree to say, listen, bro, look, I know my my morals of myself, and yeah, it's raining today, man. A tree done fell on my house, but that ain't karma. That's just a test from God. Right? right? Okay, boom. I don't walk down the street, and then some people may say that it's stealing. If I see, oh my goodness, they go a, a hundred dollar bill rolling down there. Oh, that's a blessing right there. That may be that hundred dollar bill came from somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's still about your perspective of how. So to to close that part about the karma, that's just how I feel about yeah, it. That, that's a good. That's a good. You know what uh, I'm saying? Good things happen to bad people. Bad, bad things, things happen, happen to good people. people. But I believe every seed that you sow I receive that produce too. a harvest. Now, if you sow a seed today, right, mm -hmm. it may not come, that tree may not come to after you dead and gone. Yeah. Or that tree can die before the seed, before the fruit can even produce. Mm -hmm. But the death is up to the creator. Right. So life going to show up for everybody. Like, I mean, without even sowing a seed, life is life. Right. God, 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 God can, he's so providential, God can take us through the storm mm. um, just to test our faith. Yeah. Don't have nothing to do with the seed that you sow. Mm. But those seed that you sow, your deeds. Job. Yeah. Job went through a lot. Yeah. Never, never, never conform. Never. And, 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 and you know what? Who tested, who gave the clearance for the devil to test Job. God did. Mm -hmm. God did. Right. And that leads us all the way back to where we start with personal relationship. Yes, sir. What you tell somebody, you got to, if you got a personal relationship with God for yourself, right. that you know you're in the hands of God and your steps are ordered by God and nothing can come to you without the permission of God. Right. So if God permitted it, it's like he done it. And if he done it, he's in control of it. And if I'm God's child, he's going to take care of me in it. Yes, sir. And so that's the assurance and the safety net that you have with your relationship with God. No matter what it go, no matter how it turns out, 
that I'm in the hand of God, that the devil needs permission to get at me. Mm -hmm. And if the devil get permission to get at me, that's a sign that God trusts me to handle what the devil gave to me, right. that he's going to bring me out and I'm going to have a testimony. Yes, sir. I was, uh, we got to that point as far as that relationship with God being that right now, in real time, I'm fasting, right? right? Because I, I, I believe God is taking me into a new, new, a new phase of my life. Um, and I'm not talking about retirement. I'm not talking about not playing football again. I'm just talking about being patient and knowing that I can listen to God. It's two things that I kind of want to kind of uh, make right now. But I was asking Bishop, I was like, uh, you know, the thing that I'm doing, I'm fasting until 6 o'clock. That's, you know, Sunday through Sunday for seven days a week from my birthday. I got this vision and understanding like I was. So I just turned 33 on May 11th. And afterwards, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, how can I really go into a newness of myself to really tap into, tap into everything? I want God to bring people that, that align with me, my heart, my desire. If I'm saying that I, I, I need to be like this as a businessman, as a personal man, as a father, as a brother, as a peer, as a friend, I need to bring people in my life that can hold me accountable to that. So I got... The, the understanding and the visual to say, you know what, Cam, you need to fast, right? So that's what I'm doing. But as I'm fasting until 6 p.m., whoever that I come in contact with, I'm asking them to pray with me. Mm -hmm. If I'm on a phone call, it could be a business partner. It could be a, a, a girl friend, yeah. right? It could be a guy friend. Yeah. And I'm asking them to always be obedient to say, hey, man, listen, what you got going on right now? Hey, can you just pray for me real quick? And then it led to when I'm having these when I'm having these prayer sessions, you hear, Father God, I just want to take the time to just think, right? Or you may see, you know what, God, I don't really know what Cam need. Or you may just get somebody that just said, hey, Pops, listen, it's me again. Sure. Your humble servant, da 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 Your relationship Personal. is your relationship. Personal. It's not for me to judge it. It's only for me to receive it. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And that's why, that's how we got in, um, uh, to that point right there. I, th I want to ask you a question as far as um, how do you know from the, for the viewer, right? You kind of touched on it a little bit, but how do you know when it is God that's, or how do we hear from God, right? What would be your knowledge and tutelage to be able to advise, you know, the viewer to, to making the proper steps to listening or trying to find or trace, as you said, trace God? Well, I have three, I got three things of um, listening to God. It's one, through prayer. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, through his word. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, through circumstance. Mm -hmm. If you're in tune with God, God can speak to you through a commercial. Yes, sir. You know, I'm not trying to be deep or spiritual. You could be riding on a bus mm -hmm. and two people, man, can just be talking. You'll hear something with your name on it. Mm -hmm. God speaks through normal, regular everyday situation. Some people think you just got to be this deep religious person and, and God speaks in the pageantry of worship. God speaks to you through ordinary stuff if you can be in tune with God. Mm -hmm. And so through fasting, that makes you sensitive mm -hmm. to hear God. God is speaking right now in our atmosphere. Yes, sir. Right now on an ordinary conversation. This is not script. Mm -hmm. We ain't playing it. Mm -hmm. We just being who we are. And God is speaking. Yes, and everything that God is, is speaking to you as it relates to you going to your next level and meeting some other things that God requires for you, yeah. it's already done. It's already done. What you already walked in, your experiences have been expensive. And because you're real, you remind me of Paul. Because you don't have no problem sharing where you are, who you are, where you're going, given the facts, given the realness, and people can relate and identify with that. God going to take you higher in him, going to touch people like you never dreamed. I'm prophesying in case you didn't know. Man, I'm, I'm declaring and decreeing in your life that everything that you prayed for would manifest and you shall be like a tree planted. Y'all going to make me get happy. Man, listen, <laughs> I thought you was already happy. Right? <laughs> I ain't know what I'm saying. No, so this, that, like that, I, speak, I speak this talk. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of people, they, they see 
they see me in a sense. They see Cam with the long hair. They see Cam going through a little version of himself that he knows. And I told, I spoke on, there was a time where, or a, a, a point in time where it was a viral moment that happened on the internet. And I was with the Patriots at that time. And it was Sunday during training camp and they played Kirk Franklin. Uh, Lately I've been walking through something that really Stop. got me down. And then People on our team, they don't necessarily, a lot of people may not know it. Yeah. But I'm like, man, when I was growing up, man, we had the mom to that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We was in the church. Like, my parents, they raised me up in the church, so I know I didn't start watching NFL football until I got to college. I didn't necessarily have time to because if we wasn't hearing it on the radio, yeah. going to the next service, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, meaning... You wake up earlier at 8 a.m. to make it to Bible study. Right. Then you go to 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Yeah. is actual service. Right. Then from there, depending on what Sunday it is, you got to go to somebody's hosting house sure. to feed the first family. Okay, right. then after that dinner, you have to come back to church to have a follow-up with also prayer. <laughs> right. So it was a whole day. Yeah. So when people see me now... I don't want them to feel distracted that, oh, man, I see Cam cursing. I see Cam saying, you know, this word. I hear that ain't of God. Or as the young generation say, or we say it in this, that ain't P. You know what I'm saying? Have they overlooked your heart? Probably. I don't see none of that when I see people. Yeah. I don't even look for it. Mm -hmm. I look at the man's heart. Yeah. That's all God looks at. Yeah. We... I'm so sick of religion. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. I'm, I'm sick of re Jesus was sick. He hated religion. Mm. He hated religion. Right. Sinners loved him mm. because he looked beyond what they were doing and he saw a heart that wanted change, that was pliable enough. Religion is rigid, it's hard, it's starched. Mm -hmm. Don't keep telling me what I can't do. Tell me what I can do. Yes, sir. The Lord said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Why you want to put me in a box? I didn't get saved to be miserable. I didn't come to God to be stuck. Mm -hmm. Live. I'm going to give you another situation, right? So I have a girlfriend, right? Not yeah. a person that I'm intimate with, right? Yeah but a, a, a female friend, yeah. right? And we always have good banter going back and forth, and I really genuinely care about her, yeah. right? I check up on her son, you know, she tells me how she's doing. We have like this workout regimen, she sends me certain things. Yeah. My, my partner, my girlfriend now, yeah. she knows her, yeah. right? So it's, that's that, let me, let me set the, 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 frown, the groundwork or the framework with that. She sends me, anytime she goes to church, or once she, she goes to church every week, but anytime it speaks to her to send to me, she'll send me the whole link, right? She sends me a, the, the sermon about relationships. Mm -hmm. It was a 52 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes, one of the two. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening to it while I was sitting at my office, mm -hmm. and I was just listening, I was listening, and I sent her back all the notes that I was taking. Mm -hmm. And I said, one of the main things that I have an issue with is not being able to cope with or empathize with the situation that's at hand, right? A lot of times in church, the reason why there aren't a connection with certain demographics is because you have this holier-than-thou mentality. mentality where God didn't say this, God didn't do this, God didn't do... But when God was speaking to his people, it wasn't just the, the sanctified that he was speaking to. It wasn't just all saints. These are, yeah, y'all are who y'all are, but we need to go get the sinners. Mm -hmm. I appease more to a person of your status that has some type of baggage in a in a in a closet sure. to say, man, I used to sell drugs. Man, I didn't know that. Man, I used to womanize. Man, I'm I'm battling that daily. Yeah. I appease more to that rather than listening to a sermon when it's like, man, you ain't, you can't even, you don't even, you didn't even have my heart when you was in the world. Mm. So how are you going to bring me out of the world? Mm. See what I'm saying? And that's the biggest thing because I'm listening to him. 
and he was talking, and I'm like, bro, you just don't get it. You don't understand, you know, this club is paying me $60,000 just to stay there for an hour and 30 minutes, right? You don't have no idea the woman that's come, just throwing themselves at me. Sure. Just to say, just take it. Right, huh? of course. You can't ever, you, you, you don't even know what it's like to see $300,000 in your bank account, let alone $10 million in your bank account. Sure. That's not to bring him down or yeah. his situation down. It's just to say it's hard. I need somebody to talk my talk, to speak to me, Transparently. right? Transparently. Transparently to say, you know what, Cam? I may not, but this is what the Bible says. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a true story that I went through. I did cheat on my wife. Yeah. I did do this. I did do that. And, and once you become vulnerable or I sense you being vulnerable, right. then I know there's a lot of other people that can cope with this. When I feel that you're vulnerable with me, then that's when I become vulnerable for you. But if you're coming at me like, no, oh, no, that's not this. Oh, uh, 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 God didn't do that for me. Oh, God said that is a lie. That's the devil. But that's then putting up that another brick, another brick, another brick. Why do we make it so hard for people to get to a loving God? Mm. That, that's the question. Why do we make it so hard? The rules make it so exhausting for somebody who want God, but before they get there, they bump into us. The distraction. Right. We're the biggest distraction. Yeah, because we make it so hard. Uh, I got an inbox because, you know, I'm, I'm, um, um, I was going to drop a name, but I don't like to drop names. But it's a, a very popular guy mm -hmm. that said, he said, Bishop, you are novelty because you're doing stuff other preachers don't do. Yes, sir. Dance, skate, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Mm -hmm. And so this guy inboxed me. I ain't going to drop his name. And he was like, Preacher, you're a disgrace to the entire Christian community. No. I mean, he went on me hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't follow any of the laws. He gave me a list of Levitical laws mm -hmm. of about at least 600 laws that I need to follow. Dietary laws, ceremonial laws, mm -hmm. laws, laws, laws to get an inroad to God. Right. You can't mix cotton with linen. Mm. So I said to myself, you think I'm going to go in my closet <laughs> and throw all of my clothes away mm -hmm. to have a relationship with God? That's religious. I was so exhausted mm -hmm. when he finished giving me all the rules. To Trying to prove something. Man, listen. And so I said to myself, I said, that's probably how these young people, drug dealers, Killers, drug users, feel about church. Mm -hmm. It's just too hard right. to get to God. To, when, to, to be accepted. To be accepted. Right. So we never allow, we never give them a chance to come in. Listen, if they wouldn't vouch for Paul, right? Mm -hmm. The church would have gotten rid of their greatest ally. Because Paul was once killing the Christians. Mm -hmm. And once he got saved, he wanted to join the church. Mm -hmm. They wasn't going to let him in. Right. And they was going to get rid of one of the greatest allies for the Christian community. Yeah. Paul wrote over the third of the New Testament scripture. Mm -hmm. And we throwing away people before they can even get a foot in. Right. So, so, so there's, a, there's a part of me that wants to be obedient to, to, to enhance the knowledge for people. For a person or a viewer to be able to read about Paul, what book would they read? Well, Paul wrote a third of the New Testament. He wrote uh, Galatians, Ephesians, First and Second Corinthians, uh, First and Second Thessalonians, Colossians. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote. Paul was a bad man. He was, but at the same time. That's Paul writing, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know how Samuel speaks, or, or or correct me if I'm wrong. Samuel speaks to many many different people in the Bible, the Davids. Uh, then it goes into Kings about right. Solomon, um, Samson, right, as well. What are the books to just hear about the the things that Paul went through? 
or was going through Man, as you, his development. Let me tell you something. If you read the book of Romans, chapter 7, mm -hmm. that's called my get real chapter. Yes, sir. When Paul says stuff like this, when I want to do right, evil mm. is always present. Yes, sir. In other words, when I want to do the right thing, yeah. when I want to be faithful to my girl, yeah. here's another one that looks good. Yeah. Right? Paul said there's a, he said this in the text. He said, uh, there's a war in my members. He said, I know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm going through. Mm -hmm. He said, there's no good thing that dwell in my flesh. Read it. Romans chapter 7. It'll bless your life. Paul was landed out there. Yeah. His struggle, his dualistic mind. Yeah. He said, listen, it's like two Pauls in me. Yeah. I'm, I got a dualistic nature. Mm. Every time I wake up, I'm in war with myself. Yourself. Come on, say that. Now, he was saved. Paul was showing up saved. Mm -hmm. And this man was intelligent. He, he spoke all kinds of languages. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Paul was a bad man. He was anointed to write. He wrote to the Ephesians locked up in jail, talking about God will supply your need. Bad man. Then he goes on to Romans and say, man, every time I want to do right, evil is always present. Then in Romans chapter 7, verse 24, he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He was, listen, not Lord who shall save me, mm -hmm. but who shall deliver me, watch this, after I get saved. Because mm -hmm. after you get saved, you still go to struggle. Yeah. After you get saved, you still act a fool. Mm -hmm. After you get saved, you still cuss. Mm -hmm. After you get saved, you still do what you do. So it's a process. Paul says the same God that saved me can deliver me if I just avail myself to his grace. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, man, listen. That chapter, when, once I start talking about that chapter, I get excited. I can tell. I get, I, can't, I get aggressive because here's a man of God that was absolutely phenomenal, and he's opening up with this struggle mm -hmm. that lets everybody know that's watching right now, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what church you belong to, who your bishop is, what your last name is. You can have more degrees than a thermometer. You still going to go through some <laughs> stuff. But God is the same God that deliver Paul can deliver you. I swear. Man, listen here, bro. Ah, uh, man. That's that's it. Man, listen. I mean, I I I I refuse not to acknowledge the power that you have. I I refuse not to acknowledge the appreciation that I have for you using this platform to impact. I refuse to not acknowledge the vulnerability and the honesty that you share. And I refuse to not acknowledge the fact that we need more people on this earth like you. Wow. And that's, that's strictly from my heart. Wow. Bishop O, appreciate you, brother. Man, I'm glad to be here with you, man. And, and this is the start of something, man. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I knew of you. Yeah. Now I feel like I know you. You're my brother. My brother. Oh, that's it. That's all. Yes, sir. So as we end things, we're gonna look at this camera. Yeah. Then go to that camera. Yeah. Finishing with this camera right here. We got one finger. Listen, I want you to know if you I don't don't. what? What? I messed up. <laughs> you got so much you want to say. It just feel like that. Oh, you got something finished. Please, please finish what you was oh. about to say. I want you to know if you're watching me right now, mm. there, there's there's joy. That's a waiting for your life. Yes, sir. What you've been praying for, I want you to get ready to make space for because God is about to send that thing to you and it's going to blow your mind. Don't you worry about any enemy, any hater, mm -hmm. because God says, here, prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. No table, no enemies. No enemies, no table. Mm -hmm. So keep your head up. God is in charge and he's still large. Now, I want you to know mm -hmm. that every time you go through a struggle in life, God has developed you yeah. to be all that you can be. Yeah. God uses struggle and trouble and pain mm -hmm. and trauma and depression, all these things to build your character. Mm. So don't you quit, don't you give up. The scripture says, be not weary and well doing. Keep going. Those of you that are watching right now, I speak life into your life, mm -hmm. that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Everything that you're going through got mm -hmm. purpose. The yeah. book says in Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good. Yeah. So it's not happening to you, it's happening for, for you. you. It's making you stronger. Every storm, mm -hmm. every valley, mm -hmm. it's gonna show you who your friends are. It's gonna 
gonna show you who you really are, mm -hmm. and it's gonna show you who God is. And lastly, yeah! I wanna tell you one more thing, that whatever the devil meant for harm, God about to switch that thing up and turn it for good. It's gonna be great in your life. I speak prosperity. I speak expansion. Mm. I speak increase and overflow. And if you're watching me right now, repeat this after me. Come on, I need you to repeat this after me. I need more than enough. I need more than enough. Because just enough just enough. Ain't good enough. Ain't good So enough. God going to overflow you. He's going to put you in yes. positions, open up rooms for you. And when you get in that room, mm. you're going to have to have the right posture. Mm. Don't walk in the room like you own it, but walk in it like God sent you there yeah. on an assignment. And I promise you, you're going to be blessed for the rest of your life. That's the word from the bishop. Ooh. Man, listen, bro. That was it? That was it. Man, you know what's crazy? Right. You just took over. That, I, I, didn't even, I wasn't even asking you to do that. But you just did that. You just did that. And you did it at a high level. I ain't never had nobody do it like that. You kidding me? I promise you. This is all I wanted you to do. <laughs> this is all I wanted you to do. And listen, I appreciate that. Yes. You went from camera to camera to camera to camera. You know the only thing that I was asking you to do? What? It's just do what I do. One finger. One pinky. One thumb. One love. One love. That's all I was asking. Wow. And I went all over the place. I'm sorry. I apologize. No. Guys. No. I apologize. No. Now that was all authentic. All that, I, that. Man, so why would I sit up here and stop you when you in your zone? That's it. I always end it like that. <whistles> one finger, one pinky, one love. No, 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 no. Hold on. Let's do it one more time. Got one finger, pinky. one pinky, pinky, one thumb, pinky. one love. How are we doing that? We hitting that? I can't even see these cameras. That one right there, that one right there, and that one. Okay, let's do it one more time. One more time? One more time. One more again. But hold on, let me, let, let me, let me, let me use this platform and let me speak to this. I use one love because even in the Bible it said we must love each other. That's yeah. the most important thing. You even spoke on that. Mm -hmm. Love people. Right. There's no hatred. I don't judge. I try to ask God to, 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 to fix it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I use my, my, my signature on a lot of things that I do as one love. One love. Just the love. All right, you ready? That's it. One finger. One pinky. One thumb. One love. Bishop. I hope I got it right that you time. Appreciate you. Uh, Appreciate you. I hope I messed up. I was mad all over the place you. in the beginning. Y'all gonna edit that, right? Because it was horrible. Nah. I felt my interview all over the place. <laughs>